So a new challenger has re-entered the ring. Proton is back in Trinidad Tobago officially. Now I say back because they have been here on and off for a number of years now, but they never really made a big splash. But I think they are here to stay now. Now yesterday I was invited to answer Moto's launch of the Proton vehicles, and I got a chance to look around, poke, prod, see what is what. But before we get to that, who is Proton and where are they from? Well, Proton is a Malaysian company founded in 1983, so just about 40 years old. Now, they started off life making rebadged Mitsubishi vehicles. They had a partnership with Mitsubishi and they used to make tweaks and certain alterations to the vehicles, rebadge it, and sell it under Proton Motors. Which is why back in the day when they were here previously, you often had the Mitsubishi and then you would see one or two Protons looking rather similar to the Mitsubishi lineup. Now, this partnership of bad swapping ended in 2010 when you had the Mitsubishi Lancer, which made it to our shores, and then you had the Proton Inspire which we never got down here. Now this practice isn't uncommon in the automotive industry. For example, you have a Suzuki A-Cross, which we don't have down here, but what we do have down here is the Toyota RAV4. That's just one example. To a lesser extent, you have the Toyota Rush, which we got down here, but in other markets, it's named the Daihatsu Terios, which is also a part of Toyota. You also have the Holden Equinox, which if you saw it, you will see it as a Chevy Equinox. And then you have the Holden Cruise, which we had over here as a Chevy Cruise. Now, like stated before, the partnership between Mitsubishi and Proton Motors came to an end after this generation. And currently, Proton is 49.9% owned by Geely Motors, which is a Chinese automotive behemoth if you want to call them that they have a 34.2 percent stake in renault korea they have a 50 percent partnership with mercedes-benz for these smart cars they own geely motors obviously they own 51.1 percent in lotus cars they also own part of volvo in fact no the majority of volvo 82 percent of volvo and 49.5 percent of polesta so yeah geely motors are pretty big and proton didn't come out of nowhere they've been here a long time which brings us to present day they currently have two offerings the smaller x50 and the larger x90 now the x90 is a six seater i didn't get to spend much time with it hopefully i get to do a review later on but i got to spend some time poking around and prodding with the smaller version the x50 and this is what i observed it's amazing to see how just a few years ago let's say 10 years ago in order to get a premium feeling cabin with premium materials you had to go all the way to the luxury market in terms of like a bmw or mercedes or audi and even then you couldn't buy an audi a1 and expect to get all the good stuff you had to buy like an audi a4 and up i know you are seeing these vehicles popping up with the same premium feeling materials the same design in terms of how the center console is wide and it's sturdy no creaks no rattles soft touch materials everywhere it's really a fascinating thing to see you even get everything leather leather seats well two-tone leather seats you get a black headliner which i think most vehicles should start coming with because the white and the gray gets dirty far too quickly those spots you are seeing there are the lights reflecting off of it it's not that color it's all black when you see it in real life now let's go through some brief specs because i didn't get to do a full technical breakdown given the fact after all it's an event you can't spend whole day with the vehicles so whenever i get time to do a full breakdown i will but really quickly let's go over some of the specs it has a 1.5 turbocharged three-cylinder direct injection engine now that engine is co-developed between Geely and volvo yes that volvo it has 148 horsepower and 167 foot-pounds of torque which sends power to the wheels via a seven-speed wet dual clutch transmission now the fact that volvo had a hand in co-developing this engine gives it a bit more credibility because when i heard it was three cylinders like three cylinders but volvo having a hand in it gives it more credibility now this is your instrument cluster as you can see all digital no analog gauges you have your speed on your left your tack on your right over here you have your fuel across on this side you have your temp and all the little warning lights and stuff there here you have your steering wheel your steering wheel controls you have your proton badge which yes it does look like a thundercat we have to say that we can't leave it out the proton badge does look like thundercats you have your main infotainment system here now you know i must touch it up because I have a pet peeve with slow infotainment systems. This one wasn't slow. At this point in time, I think I have to stop pointing this out because infotainment has reached a point where it's almost expected, no matter what the price point is, it is going to be responsive. And this one is no exception to that. You touch stuff, it just pops up. Quite frankly, I think the screen should have been a bit bigger, but it is what it is. This is what we get. And you have everything right there. You have your phone, you have your wireless connectivity for your music, for your Bluetooth. Everything is just there. And I also like the fact that even though everything can be controlled via the screen, you have two physical buttons right there for volume. It's always good when you have volume at a touch with physical buttons. It just makes the volume process a bit easier. You also have a button to turn the screen on or off in case it's too bright while you're driving and distracting you. You can turn it on or off. Below that, you have physical buttons and dials for your climate control, even though it can be controlled via the screen. You still have the buttons there. You have your gear lever. You have buttons for Eco Sport, your 360 camera, your automatic parking brake, and your parking aids. And you also have cup holders. And what seems like 
a phone holder to the left of all of that. And then you have this bar here. You can find it in some of the newer model Hondas, which I don't like. I hate this bar. It just makes getting special attention from your significant other while driving a bit more difficult because this giant bar is in the middle here. I don't know why they put it there, but you know, it's there in case you're wondering. You also have a glove box. Well, duh, most modern vehicles have glove boxes. It's not particularly big and it's not illuminated, but it's there to put small items. If you have small items that you have to put in there, it's there if you need it. Now, really quickly, let me just show the 360 camera system. I know you all like to see that. So you can either activate it by putting the vehicle in reverse or hitting the camera button and it pops up. Now, as you can see, it's pretty clear. It's, it's almost one-to-one -one with what you are seeing outside. Given the fact that people were standing so closely, I can compare literally one-to-one. -one. There's no delay, there's no lag, but I really wish you could have moved about the views a bit better. Like if I want to make the one on the left bigger, the one in the center, or maybe move the one to the left altogether and make the one in the center, the whole screen, I really wish there was that option, but I couldn't find it. Maybe it's there, but I couldn't find it. Now, in terms of build quality, I went ahead and poked and prod and pulled when I think nobody was looking, and it seemed a bit solid. It seems like it was well put together. On top here really isn't that soft, but it's not that hard either. It's like a slight middle ground between not too soft and not too hard. All in all, I think they knew what they were doing. They put it together really well. Now, I can't speak for 10 years down the road how they hold up. I don't know. But as for now, everything seems solid. At the rear here, you do get rear AC vents and two power outlets, which is good to see. More vehicles are coming with dual power outlets. Here's a better look at the rear seats. Now, I think if you move the middle seat, or that middle section there, it's essentially two front seats that they put at the back. It looks like it, it hugs you in place. It's the same way the two front seats hugs you in place. The two rear seats also hug you in place as well. It's not as aggressive like racing seats, like full-on bucket seats, but it does a good job and it's pretty comfortable. So hopefully in the coming days or weeks, I get to go and do a full-on in-depth review because it was quite difficult to get shots of the vehicles clearly because people were just all around it. This was the scene. <laughs> Yeah, so we have to look at our stock image now because it was quite difficult to film the vehicles and especially just noisy and stuff. So hopefully in the coming days or weeks, I'll get to go and do a full-on in-depth review, even take the vehicle out on the road and see how it drives, see how it feels, and I'll be able to come back and tell you all how the X50 and how the X90 drives.